All right, everybody, quiet on set. Here we go. Live from Houston, Texas, as another exciting episode with the Queen of Color, the amazing artistic. I need more A's. Awesome. Awesome. Astounding. Astounding. Articulating. Articulate. Amazing. Amazing. You said, said it already. Right? Yeah. Oh, well, Ginger Cook, here we go, live from Houston, Texas, people. Ginger. Hi, guys. Hey, there you are. Hey, listen, I'm telling you what, this is, I'm looking forward to a really fun night. We're going to be painting a fall reflections in, in a pond. It's going to be a couple of waterfalls. It's going to be a fun night. We are really going to talk about, again, uh, you know, more tree things, and so a lot of times people get you know a little puzzled on how you make reflections and we we've got a couple of videos on YouTube on how to do that as well as our uh, website but it doesn't doesn't hurt to show a different angle a different perspective and we're making this little painting 8 by 10 but I'll tell you what if you were to make it say even 16 by 20 you might even be able to throw a little deer on the bank you know I mean just don't throw it up there put him <laughs> up there right don't give him the heel oh whoops an upside down deer on the bank right but uh, you got to have that visual so, you know, this is the kind of thing. And, you know, if, if you missed last night's show... We're was, sorry. We're sorry because we had a special guest on, Daniel Elliott, who's the manager and professional artist from Jerry's Autorama here in Houston, and he answered all kinds of questions. That is, if you haven't caught that video, be sure to watch it. And because that's, um, there's so much information, everything from how to, you know, how to price your paintings, how to take air... How to go on an airplane with your stuff, how long does acrylic last, I mean, uh, what's the difference between oil paints and acrylics, and what about water-soluble oils, and honestly, the questions went on and on, so I'm going to pitch that video again, because I think that we were really lucky to get him, and also the whole time he was there, he was painting with us, all right, and uh, this is the picture of the painting that Daniel did, isn't that beautiful? Um, and this was, a, uh, the whole time he was talking, he just started, it was almost like a cloud doodle, but he showed... He talked about how he used just um, magenta, phthalo blue, and yellow, to, and just white to make this painting. And there were some marvelous colors being mixed. It's his personal p color palette he likes to use when he's minimizing colors. Anyway, there was some great information on that. And also, this particular painting, he said uh, that you know he not only let us keep it, but he said it would be available to uh, for our auction. So we put it up on our website, our auction website today. We already have a bid on it, but his artwork on that size goes goes for five hundred dollars and up. And I think our current bid is is one forty five at this time. All right, the auction will close uh, the, on the fifteenth of next week. Midnight. Midnight. And incidentally, that's John's birthday, August fifteenth. So uh, we're going to have a big birthday show for him next Tuesday. Oh boy! Tuesday. Oh boy! I can hardly wait. Look well, he, at the you know, smile just, on my face. Well, too bad, John. <laughs> we're going to celebrate John's birthday. We're going to have fun. We did, you know, we're going to do a birthday bash for John next week, and also kind of talk about our auction a little bit because again, we only have five days left to, uh, you know, to get in on that. And also, there's a lot of other paintings on our auction site too. And you know, when you think about how artwork is, most of us. Um, when we're selling artwork, we, um, when we're professional artists, Daniel kind of explained how you know you price it by the square inch, and everything on our website was priced way below wholesale to start off with the bids. There's some great deals. So, and then uh, the proceeds from Daniel's painting is going toward our scholarship fund, which um, you know every once in a while we have an Academy of Fine Art. Those are going. What is that? Well, Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting is our online website. Um, and this is where we have over 300 lessons and we teach very basic beginning techniques to advance and our members get new paintings every week and, and do I dare show the painting that we're going to be showing them on uh, no. Thursday I can't show you that but we have a Renoir a nude that's going to be on uh, for our members we've never done that before I put a picture of it on our Facebook page I'm, I'm reluctant to put anything like that on YouTube but we do it's a very tasteful nude trust me well, it's Renoir Come on. And it's done by Renoir, and it's yeah, a step by step, and that's for our members. Really cool. That will be released on Thursday. All right, that's our Thursday release. I like to kind of give a shout out for that. So, John, if you would be so kind as to to aim the camera down on our uh, desk, and I want to remind everybody to 
subscribe and also to just give a shout out to John Little. He's our executive producer, runs all the camera equipment. He's the business partner and other half of gingercooklive.gallery, which is our academy website. And John will answer a lot of your questions and make sure I get them. If we have time, we'll try to play a little trivia. And for those of you who just enjoy a straight lesson without all this chat, <laughs> just saying that we, our live uh, shows, we answer questions, we have fun, we joke around, we kid. But on our website, it is just me and you talking. I'm just talking to the camera. And if you're my student, it's like I'm in your home giving you a private lesson. It's just the two of us. John is not on any of those videos. So I just wanted to mention that in case of, you know, some people say, well, they can focus better. You know, everybody has a different way of learning. I know, for instance, when I have to um, get directions to go somewhere, I can have, if I'm trying to find, say, a, 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 find my array, way around a city where I've never been, I have to have total quiet in the car at that point. You know, nobody can talk or nothing if I'm driving and trying to figure out where I'm going. Sometimes we all have different ways we need to focus. We don't fault anybody for that. But be ready for a party and a splash of color. You can see we're going to do this super fun little painting. And if you have, again, um, and then this is, um, we started off with a dark a green canvas. And I kind of mentioned that on YouTube, so I, I wanted to get that done ahead of time. And this is made with, um, uh, ultramarine uh, blue and dosnein purple and a little yellow and let's see I need to put out the some more purple where'd that purple go uh, a question has come up did uh, ginger freak out with all the water that Daniel was using last night well you know Daniel just keeps his brush damp all the time I use more paint that's the difference between the way the two of us paint uh, my paint stays the probably the same amount of moisture in the paint but I just use more paint usually okay so that if I, uh, but there's nothing wrong, you know, that's, everybody's got different styles. And also, did you notice he was left-handed? So he was holding, he also held the brush totally different than I do, okay? I mean, we all have different ways of painting things, um, th and that's fine. And I, I would love to be able to bring him back and have him show you his palette knife techniques when I get, get a chance. We'll, we'll, we'll just see. He got some great, thank you guys for all the good comments you did, um, because what that did for us for, you know, is that Daniel got to see it, probably corporate saw that too. You know, he has to be careful. He works for a big, giant corporation. He still wants his job tomorrow, you know what I mean? That's just, and so when he cuts on a show like this, you know, he's not just representing himself, he's also kind of representing Jerry's. And I think he did that very well. I think they're probably very pleased with the video. And it got a lot of people maybe never heard of that company. Um, they certainly got a lot of requests for new places, you know, for more Jerry's. You know, John, I am sitting here fumbling around here. I had a tiny bit of um, purple, and I don't see it now. Let me come Everything up. got good. Would you mind coming and look, see if you can find my purple? If not, grab me a new one, because I'm not finding the purple. While we're talking about this, here's our, here's our, um, John probably put this up. Incidentally, um, uh, do you see that we've got a, We've got a, a bank, and it comes across here like this, and then zigzags around. So if you, if we did four fingers here, from the bottom, while John's looking for the purple, we just do four fingers like that, and then I'm going to come over here and do about four up here at the top like that. Okay, then I'm going to come about probably about five fingers. Oh, thanks. I knew I was missing. See, look at that. It's missing yeah, it's that. Show, show no, it's fine. <laughs> So it's just coming about this far and then zigzags in around. This is what we're, z we're just doing a ziggy zag like that, okay? That's pretty easy, yeah? And we're going to say that we've got a bit of a bank here coming down here like this. This is, this is going to be our bank. And then what I'm going to have is we're just going to suggest some trees. And the reason I'm just using chalk is that we, we may even put some trees in different places, but it's good to know where that you, you're a little bit like almost like a skeleton. You kind of want to know you've got some trees. All right, so there's the trees in our bank. So our, our colors are yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, dosnein purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, burnt umber, cad red medium, naphthal crimson, and we may even. Um, Let's see, that wasn't that, that was magenta, right? I was thinking I wanted to put out some naphthal crimson. So there, naphthal crimson is here. Uh, cad red medium is an orange red. Magenta, I think Daniel did the best quadrochrome magenta. Quinacridone uh, magenta. He's, uh, I thought his explanation last night of what that was, a man-made uh, color, 
It's really cool, don't you think? I hope you guys got to see it. Anyway, and naphtha crimson is your uh, color wheel red. That's the red on your color wheel. That's a pure red. The cad red medium is like a slightly has a slightly orange quality to it, uh, you know, slightly orange, and so it's like an orange red. Very nice uh, colors. Um, if you guys happen to watch our video we did a couple weeks ago, um, this particular painting, this abstract, was done with just cad red medium, phthalo blue, and yellow, and yet we got all these colors, and black and white is our other two colors. I just thought that was a challenge that we did with a, a good friend of ours uh, who does abstracts. and uh, Ray Grimes. Ray Grimes. So, um, you know, he, we just sort of wanted everybody to know about him, and so I did this painting. and. But I love all the colors we've got in it. So, again, sometimes having, and Daniel last night got all of this, all of these beautiful colors and tones of blue, just using phthalo blue, magenta, and yellow, and white. So, I mean, that's kind of cool too, isn't it? So those are the kind of things that um, you can do just with a few colors. Uh, I never buy green. Uh, and sometimes the more you learn to mix, the I think the the less colors you end up ha feeling like you have to have. You know, sometimes it's nice to have colors. Uh, just It's just pleasant to have a bunch of colors out there handy, but sometimes it's, it's good to know how to mix them. Now, in, in, do I have any questions before I just get rattling on here? Get rattling on? I'm sorry. I believe you were already in that phase. I was. Now, anything else? <laughs> uh, no. No. All right. So one of the things you do, even acrylics, we've got this dark background. We want to start with our sort of olive green colors first. So we're going to take a little yellow oxide. This is a little 3 8 inch angle brush and mix it with some uh, ultramarine blue. We've got this sort of army green. You could kind of camouflage tanks with that. And I want to just dot it back here. You'll notice that the dots are connecting like this. I'm not, I, like I said, I didn't draw in my trees. I just suggested, I just needed something there to sort of suggest trees. And then I'm using just the corner of this brush and just tapping in here like that, just suggesting little dots overlapping. This is sort of impressionistic painting. This is how I like to do trees. And uh, like I say, you could do this painting much larger, you know, than have a little deer or something standing on the bank would be kind of cute. Uh, who was it that put, Manette put some real cute deer in one of her barn paintings recently, one of the things she put some deer in. The thing about it is if you're going to put any kind of animals or anything like that in, what you've got to remember is wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if you camouflage your deer in, which I'm sure they would love because it's, you know, they it's don't want, season. you know, but as you, no one will be able to see them. So you've got to remember wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if you've got a dark brown deer, then you better throw in some light colors around it in the way of foliage. Does it make sense? Let's just kind of come this way and just tap in some of these colors like this. And I want you to see him starting another tree over here, which is kind of cool. And I think that's kind of neat. Somebody, I can't believe it, somebody asked us yesterday in the chat, after Daniel and I did, we do this explanation all the time, why do you sand a canvas? And you guys, you sand canvases, you lightly sand them so that your brushes don't wear out and also because it, your paint goes further. Oh, okay. And I thought we'd talk about that quite a bit. Now here's a little Dosnine purple and yellow and I want you to see what happens. I've got a different color army green. Do you see that? So that's a different color green. It's such kind of almost a gold color. You might want to talk about your background. Some people believe that's black. Maybe no, it is not black. This is a very dark green. I never use black. This is a dark green. This is just, this is just ultramarine blue, yellow, and a little Dosnian purple. And that's how we made this dark background. It's not black. I just want to make sure people understood that. Well, like that, that's a good point, John, and I appreciate it because I want to make sure that you know people don't think that we do that. You know, we're we're talking about. Um, adding a, 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 a video blog, maybe not on YouTube, maybe just put it up on Facebook now again, because sometimes I just have thoughts about paint materials or think different things, and it's fun to kind of rant and rave about them, you know? <laughs> and uh, other things that come to your mind. Well, things that, you know, things, well, th questions come up during the week, you know, people sit there and, you know, somebody asked the other day, you know, they did, they had some personal art coaching with me, and, uh, you know, the question came up, you know, I had suggested to this one gal that um, that she might um, uh, change the size of a house that was in her picture. 
and then because our members get personal art coaching, you guys. They get, when you're a monthly member of gingercooklive.gallery, you can send me your artwork. But in, interesting, these are just suggestions. This is just my opinion of the, of the uh, painting, of what I think you might be able to do. But it's not in any way, you know, written in stone or anything. I mean, it's just if you send me some artwork, I will tell you, you know, this would be good. Sometimes I'll send you back a black and white photo of the art and suggest that you... Um, Let's make a little more of that color, that purple and yellow. That's pretty, isn't it? Kind of this. Uh, Which angle brush are you using right I'm now? I'm doing the 3 8 inch. These are ruby satin silvers, and one of the things I love about the brush guys, um, they're not. They will ship. They will ship around the globe, and it's not that much. I think our friend Sylvia in Australia, um, she said that she got a whole bunch of brushes, and they charged her flat twenty-five dollars to ship them. The thing of it is that sometimes in certain countries like Canada or the UK. You can get socked with, I think that's the word socked, you know, like yeah. pow, with a duty. And they, they can't do anything about that, just the way it happens. So, um, but in any way, if you're in the States, uh, the, the Brush Guys, uh, brushguys.com, they have all, just a fabulous supply. They have all my daughter's brushes. They have the ruby satin silver and the type and the, and the brushes that I recommend. And if you will use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, you get 5% off. Isn't that cool? No matter where you buy, you don't have to buy it just out of the teacher's page. If you look for Ginger Cook on their teacher's page, um, you, you know, you'll see you know, the list of brushes that I recommend my students have. And I'd also like to add to that that I really like the new Bristol on brushes, Cinnamon Found, which I think are really good. And you know, one can never have too many brushes, okay? Apparently not. No. No, because they wear out, things happen to them, okay? Ursula she, would like to know, she's new to our channel, if the pastel chalks that you're using, are they water soluble? Uh, well, the, um, I think the question was, was these pos Posco? No, 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 the chalk. Oh, the chalk. The yeah, chalk. this chalk, it just comes right off. Here, I don't want to lick my finger. Let me try something else. New plan. Uh, <laughs> a new plan. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, soluble. And they, this is just, these are just new pastels. The other thing I like is, um, if I had one handy, I'd show it to you. There's nothing handy here. All the stuff's here, but none of it's handy. This well, is, we had a visitor, and he just rearranged everything. We shoved everything off to one side, none of where anything else. But another thing I like is the Conti uh, white charcoal pencils, too. I really like those, too. And they and they, and they kind of erase. Now, the pot, somebody asked, like, I don't know... Um, I will say this at the beginning of the of the deal here. The Posca pens are, are you know what Daniel used to sign his name. It's what I use to sign my name here. Also, you can use them for a detail work. I like the white and the brown ones and so forth. And I like these better than say some of the other kind of pens because you can erase them for about five minutes before they then they're then you can't move them. And then after that, it's a done deal. You paint over them, but they're they're done. But I do like the idea that you can change your mind and erase them. Okay, so now we're going to come down here. We've, we've been playing with all this green. Do you see that? Kind of connecting a few things. Um, okay. Anne Marie's making a comment. I can see that you're using yellow, and I can see your yellow. Why is it showing up tonight? Because I thought yellow only shows on white. Well, well, yellow will show up, but it will show up brighter on white. It's a very muted yeah, yellow instance, right I, now. For instance, one of the things that, you know, I don't know if you guys remember this cloud lesson. You guys, this is on YouTube. This is a great lesson. I just want to point that out because, you know, Daniel and I have different ways to get to clouds, but we all get to clouds, don't we? We have different ways to get there, but, I mean, here's a cloud lesson that I did, you know, some time ago. It's on YouTube. Now, this yellow was done over, some, over white. Otherwise, oh. we wouldn't really see it. It wouldn't be that bright and cheery. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't see it. Yeah. So, you know, it's... it's um, you know, in your case, in Daniel's case, when he needed something a little lighter, he left some light spots for his stuff. Okay, I'm going to come... A very interesting approach. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways to paint things. There was an artist in, a, in acrylics in an oil painting. Generally, you paint from dark to light, but there was some... In watercolors, you paint from light to dark. Okay, you keep getting darker. So we're going to start doing some lines going across like this, like that. So. But there was an artist uh, some years ago, back in the 1920s or, or 1900, 1920s, an American artist. His name was Lord Leighton. Beautiful paintings. He did, um, you know, like he, he painted imaginary scenes of, 
of, of if you were in a Roman villa with lions and, and tigers lying around and women in beautiful gowns lions, and tigers and bears. Bear. Oh my gosh, he was. Um, I don't think Sammy. I'm sorry, there were no bears, but um, <laughs> but he put. Um, but anyway, he and he, his, his women were like porcelain dolls. They were so beautiful, and uh, he painted his oil paintings from light to dark, not the other way. So, totally. I mean, I'm just saying yeah. that that's, a, you there's, know, there's, there's not, several ways to get there. Several ways to get there. You get, if one of the things that, one of the reasons we show you how to paint the masters, like on our website, we have lots of paintings of Van Gogh, Renoir, Cezanne, Matisse, um, all those guys is because there's, uh, and, and some others, you know, American artists that you may have never even heard of, but these old, what I can refer to as the old dead guys, because there's a lot of different ways to see artwork and to paint it. And if you do an ocean 10 different ways, then the, th the 11th way is going to be your way. You're going to, have, you're going to end up adapting brush strokes that feel right to you and not of, of others, okay? So we're going to sit there and... Hey, well, we'd like to thank a, a Tanya for the donation. She's given a contribution to help another artist join us. Oh, Tanya, that is so sweet. You know, this is something new in the last few months that YouTube offered. It's only available on our live uh, shows, and it's called Super Chat. And uh, last night we were very appreciative of people that kind of contributed to that. That, that how, how do they do that, John? Well, let me see. What the, Tanya made a comment here. I just thought it come up. Let's hear, let's hear a comment. Uh, from Tanya. Because I'm blessed to be a member, I hope this will help someone for a, for a month. Um, oh. down, down underneath where you type your chat, where it says say something, on non-Apple devices currently, you'll have a little dollar sign next to your emoji. And that's called Super Chat. And you put... Just click on it, and it'll ask for a donation from a dollar to five hundred, and you can type a, a book in there, I believe. I don't know if I read the whole thing for you, but you can make a special comment in there, and we'll read it, and we thank you. So anyway, that's how you do it. So thank you very much. Now I've got a larger brush here. This is the number twelve, bright ruby satin silver. It's wet, and I'm going to just take this brush like this, and just smear this. Is that a little. wet or damp? It's damp. It's okay. damp. It's damp, and I'm just kind of lifting up. Like that, just smearing kind this, just a, a hair, just kind of blur this out, just a hair, right? Like that, it's water, just kind of blur it out, just a hair. Now, if you got too much and you want to erase something, just take a little water and just come in here, rinse, wipe, and swipe, and you can come back. And if you got a little bit carried away, you can, you can, uh, you can erase. Make sure that the bottom layer is dry. You erase it right down to the, um, you know, the back. So you can erase it. So this is how we're gonna. We're going to kind of just sort of, just, just soften that a little bit, okay? Another question from a new, a new uh, subscriber. I'm hoping she's a subscriber. Mama is asking, any tips on painting on canvas paper? So I just saw that as well. Uh, canvas paper is a little different. Uh, we, we have actual canvas sheets that we're, our, our members paint on. We can maybe show you what the tablet looks like. We do six by eight. A lot of our lessons are six by eight because the idea is paint's expensive. We can show you all kinds of ways to paint things small because if you start with 16 by 20 and you don't actually have it, um, you know, it down, you can, you can waste a lot of paint doing that. Now this is a, this is called a Paramount tablet. It's, um, they're real canvas pieces, sheets of canvas that, that, are, that are gessoed. Now canvas paper is a little different. It probably has a plastic coating on it. And you know, that's fine. If you can paint on, you know, if you had watercolor paper, for instance, all you have to do, like a heavy block of watercolor paper, all you have to do to prep that is to put, um, is to, you know, maybe um, put, a, put a layer of gloss medium and varnish on it. Not spray varnish, but gloss medium and varnish. Brush that on um, and let it dry for about an hour and you can paint right on the paper too. So, you know, I think that's kind of cool. All right, so I've, I've cleaned my brush. Now I'm going to go into this lighter color, take a little bit of yellow in ultramarine blue, and we're going to lighten up the color now. And well, questions come up. Do you have, um, did Ginger add her big brushes to the likes on her list in the brush guys? No, we need to update that, and that's on the works. We have a bunch yeah, we have to add to that list. Yeah, but you can run over to Cinnamon's, you know, website too, you know, her page, and I, I'm a big supporter of any of her brushes, I think are great too, and again, you can use my, you know, um, you can put those in your cart. And um, sometimes they will be, um, here's a little bit brighter green. Do you see that? We just took a little ultramarine blue and yellow. 
and we didn't mute it too much. We're just going to have a little bit brighter green a couple places up here like that. Not too far. Let's mute it a little. Let's take a little bit of magenta, like a drop, and add to that and just tone that back. That'll just tone that back a little and I'll show you the difference. You see that? It's still bright but not quite as bright as that. And we're going to say the light's kind of coming from this direction. So these little uh, leaves on this side and maybe some ones coming in front are going to be a little lighter. And uh, we're going to just sit there and let's just add some light to these like this. There you go. Uh, does, Jun does Ginger use Paramount canvases like Daniel? Um, well, when I worked at Jerry's, I did because they gave them to me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So sure. But honestly, Ginger, right them. now, since we have to pay for them. You know, I've just been going to Michael's and buying canvas because I'm buying them, right? But they used to give them to me when I worked Everyone's got them the cheapest. That's where we get them. And, but, you know, for my, you know, archival work, then I'll, then I, I actually have a lot of Paramount canvases. Yeah, for the commercial One of work. the things you've got to work, I'm telling you what, this is the message that's really too important. Because <laughs> if you take a little canvas like this, 8x10, there's millions of little ready-made 8x10 frames. In fact, you can even take a photograph out of an 8x10 frame and probably put your own picture in it. But, but, but basically, for canvas, all right? There's 8x10, you know. So when you buy a, a, a canvas that has this narrow, small edge like that, when you get into the bigger size, if it says, if it says like 18x24, whatever it says on it, take a ruler with you and measure it, because I've actually seen this where it's 18 and an eighth or something. Well, guess what? 18 and an eighth doesn't cram into a ready-made frame anymore, because their frame is for 18 by 24, and there's no room to start shoving stuff in. You know what I mean? You can't just take a hammer and start pounding it in. So um, I'm, I'll make sure that, you know, because these things, well, let's back up. Did you know, that, you know it's so hard when you go shopping with a guy to convince him if he buys a pair of jeans and he's and he tries the first one on and they fit. Now you guys know what I'm talking about. And then you say, but you got to try on the other pairs too. Why they these fit? They're fine. No, they're not fine. Every pair of jeans is slightly different. You guys know that. They start with a stack of, of you know, you know, maybe 12 feet tall with a laser cutter, and then they cut them out, and then a bunch of people sew them. And there's varying degrees, and sometimes, particularly if the weight is an issue. A, a little tiny bit can make a big difference on whether something fits. And so you got you guys, women pretty much have figured out that if you're going to try something on, you buy, try them all the things on, regardless of the size. This is the same thing with canvas. Just because it says it's an 18 by 24 or 36 by 48 doesn't mean diddly squat. Take your tape measure with her and measure it. Wow, that's a public service announcement. This is the kind of thing that my blog would do. And you also know? measure it from corner to corner to make sure it's square. Oh yeah, that's the other thing because um, they warp. It's wood. It warps, and square stuff doesn't. Th unsquare canvas doesn't go <laughs> into um, into a square frame. Into a square frame, it just won't won't work. Doesn't work. It's all very distressing. I can't tell you how distressing it is when it doesn't work. Okay. We just had somebody comment that they got unsubscribed from us. I was about to like today's show and notice that I that YouTube had unsubscribed me. It has come to our attention, even though YouTube says it doesn't do that, that apparently it does. If you don't go to somebody you've subscribed to often or frequently, they will unsubscribe you from that person. They do, and it's really sad to hit a little water on it's the brush It's annoying here. for us as mm -hmm. artists trying to make a living at this. That's right. I mean, it's, it's not nice for us. We're not big fans of it when they do that and so we appreciate and we appreciate if you haven't subscribed we really appreciate it we're really close to getting to almost we just made 39,000 subscribers you guys that's awesome we're really proud of ourselves this is really a, a, a great thing we appreciate it very much and, and without you we couldn't have done it so you know if you know anybody you think would like our channel and when you put your stuff in playlists and you share our artwork um, Here's going to dampen that brush again, do the same thing, and I kind of wipe it off, right? And I'm just going to go this way and lift, just kind of smear it a bit. There we go, lift, lift, smudge, smudge, lift, wipe, smudge. Okay, this is just our bottom layer of smudgies, but it's important to have it, you know? And I like to do a little bit at a time, and now I'm going to come in with a little yellow oxide. We're still playing with our, ooh, that's brighter, see that? That's our next layer of color. I like to do all that. You know, you saw that. Here's our next layer. This is almost pure yellow oxide in a few places. I tap that in. 
haven't put any of the oranges on. I'm just kind of playing with the golds and the greens and the yellows. And I love fall. Uh, it's a nice time of year. It's not, it's not quite time yet, but I know that some kids are getting ready to go back to school. It seems like they go back in Texas. You know, we used to go back, uh, you know, day after Labor Day when I was a kid, and they know they do that up in Canada. But, they, boy, they, those kids, are, my grandkids are going to be going back to school in another week. They'll be back in school, and um, which is amazing to me. It seems like they spend an awful lot of time in school. I'm going to put a different kind of bush right here when uh, I come up here. Ludwin has a question. Sure. I'm wondering in terms of archival quality, is masonite better or cedar hard board? Um, well, Daniel talked about that. I really would like you to talk, talk look at, review what Daniel said last night because he was saying that one of the things you have to do with any board, all right, is use some GAC 100 by Golden and in keeping from the oils from leaching out and leaching through it and ruining your picture, you've got to seal it with a barrier seal before you gesso it. So um, obviously, you know, masonite is particle board. You know, it's a it's a manufactured particle board, but um, but you know a lot of I tell you what's the advantage of painting on board? Well, you know, for one thing, um, a lot of the masters did it when they were doing really detailed pieces. They wanted such a smooth surface, which you can't really get with canvas. You can a little bit with linen, but you know, basically, it's it's not as easy as you'd think to get that. And um, so that they would they would paint on on board. Um, board can split. I don't know. To just um, these are the kinds of things that, now, now Ampersand and Jerry's actually makes a board canvas. I think we put one of our um, paintings on it. We have it on there. I think it's on the wall. It's the Garden Steps. It's the larger one. Yeah. It's, and we did it on board and they make a, a board for watercolor and, and oils and also for acrylic. Jerry's does. And up until then it was a company out of Austin. It was some college kids that invented it. And they figured out how to, to make special boards that were archival for artists, the problem is that they were wildly expensive. I mean, really pricey. And also, large boards, if you paint a large painting, it's very hard to uh, hang on the wall, all right? And remember, the little brush strokes are going back and forth like this. So you want to keep going. Um, I had another question. Hold on, yeah, hold on, hold yeah. on. Okay. Hold on. Here. Uh, Layla, how do I store my unused canvases, horizontally or standing? Well, I don't know. <laughs> just uh, you know, I, I just don't put them in the garage. I don't think it matters. I have some standing against the wall, and I have some hanging on the wall. We have them and you can hang it. And the art store has some flat, and they. Um, so I, I think that what the trick is is you just don't want them to, the humidity to get to them. Yeah, you got to keep them dry. I think is more important. Yeah, that's the main thing. You know what you've got room for. Okay. Also, you can't have two paintings touching each other. Can't have two paintings that if you haven't hung them, don't have two acrylic paintings touching each other, they'll glue themselves together all by their little selves. Did you know that? Sue would like to know, is it ever a good idea to buy stretch canvases online since we can't measure them? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> um, you can get, you, they usually want you, you've got, to, you know, that's a good point, Sue, because you can't measure them. Nope. So, though when you get them home, you better measure them, and then you can call them up and say, by the way, these suck. You know, <laughs> or whatever the deal is, right? Sorry, but if you can say that, then uh, who knows what their return policy is? I'd find that out, right? If the canvas is not uh, as stated, you can show them pictures that you know and, and say, "Look, you guys, it's all been fun, but this isn't working for me," kind of thing. All right. So you see here how we just end, uh, already we've got something kind of pretty, and we've just been playing with the golds, right? We haven't really been doing much. Haven't done a lot of bright greens yet. Kind of playing with the golds gold colors. It's looking good to me. And you know, you see how we're just sort of building it up. Now I might take a little bit of purple and, and cad red medium and then a little bit of white. That's sort of pretty. How about a little phthalo blue? Let's put some in there. A little too much. Let's try a little white. See what we get here. All right. How about a little burnt umber? I keep going to keep playing with this until I get a color I want. There we go. Ah, gray. See that? Sort of a gray color. Kind of an off gray color. Anyway, a lot of different ways to get gray, and I'm going to suggest, I've got a little tree up here. I'm going to suggest there might be one here, and I'm going to suggest that there, I might see uh, some tree in here like this, using just no sense in drawing the whole tree in when we don't need all of it. 
because some of it's hiding back here like that. Okay, we know we've got a tree coming up here like this. The little things. Now you could use a smaller brush. I like these. This is a pretty new. Um, putting a few more trees in than um, had in the other one. One of the things you want to remember is you don't want a branch going off at in this angle because that our eyes follow lines, and so anytime you do a line. If you have a line going off the canvas, it takes your eye out of the picture. So if I could put a line, this one's kind of going in that way, right? And um, uh, let's see, I might just bring that down a little further and just say this trunk is coming up this way. Make this tree a little bigger. It might. I don't know. if I can always hide it if I don't like it later. And I can come back and put a few more trees in. This is just the first thought about some trees in here like that. So we've added some trees. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to add some, um, uh, let's take a little brown with this now. Put a little more brown in that color. And I'm going to just add a little bit of bank here too, to suggest that there's a bank here on our water, up here like that. Let's come back here with a little bit of gray back here on the top here. There might be some gray rocks at the top of these. Same color we were using for the trees, you know, like that. Okay, so there's a bank, and then I might, uh, well, we, we'll do the rest of that later. I'm gonna take the, I think if I wanted to, I could then at this point suggest, <coughs> suggest a tree just going back and forth like this, kind of, um, you know, you wanna come straight down from it like that. And even if we end up covering it up, it doesn't hurt to put it in, you know you've got, You've got this tree right here. We're saying that this is the lighter side of this tree, so I'll make it a little bit lighter here, like that. Okay, and I'm going to just say that coming this way, just a little backwards, little strokes like that. And you're saying there's the, okay, let's take something light here. And uh, remember, light's coming on that side, so I'm going to lighten up the trunks. There and I, I'm gonna always put these in later, but I'm just gonna sit there. Just suggest um, some branches in here. Just kind of wiggling the back brush back and forth, skipping a few places. Just something like that. You don't have to get to. You don't have to. You don't have to be. Um, notice if you have a reflection going this way, then the then the bottom reflection goes that way. It jackknifes. Okay. So that's going like that in this direction that tree and this down here. Gen and Jennifer's asking a question. Yeah. Can you use black mixed with another color on canvas? Will it look flat? Yeah, sure. Is yeah. this going to dull the color? I mean, Is this going to dull it? I mean, and in fact, Daniel was talking about uh, last night about, uh, what was it, um, Atelier um, acrylics where they have a, a green black, which he said was one of his favorite colors. Remember that? Yeah. Okay, so I think this is, um, the green and the red are opposite each other on the color wheel, so one of the things you have to be aware of is going to get here a little bit of white and yellow here and lighten up some green here at this point. This is this is our next light color. Barely touch it like this. I don't. I, that's kind of brighter than I want. Let's put a little bit more. Let's take a little bit of magenta and put in that. There we go. Make it more of a sunflower yellow. Did you see how that? We kind of got a sunflower yellow going with that. But it's a little brighter than yellow oxide. Adding some magenta, that's pretty, isn't it? And let's put some of that color in here like this now. Just just start putting in some color in the water. And going back and forth like this. Kind of blurring it ourselves. Uh, to do. And also somebody wrote me this week about um, they, you know, someone comes along and says, gosh, I really like that painting. Will you sell it to me? And you go, sure. And then someone else came along and said, I just can't believe you sold that painting. I so liked it, right? And then um, you go, well, I sold it to so-and-so. And then will you make me another one? So they do. And then the question was, do they have to number them? You only number prints. You don't number paintings. That was a good question, I thought, though. Bring it up. I'm going to dry this real quick, okay? Oh, that sounds like fun. All right, so we're going to take a moment and dry this before we put the other colors. Yeah. Go right ahead. I'll mute you. All right, while well, she's muted, 
I'd like to remind everybody we have an auction going on at juniorcooklive.gallery slash auction that's running through the end of the until August 15th at midnight um, question just came up should I I want to I have some paintings to sell should I frame them first don't frame them first a lot of times you will lose the sale because a person doesn't like the frame but they love your picture back to ginger what was oh well, Let's see, I had a brush. <laughs> you saw it before the break, you all saw I had a brush in my hand. Is it on the floor? Mm. Is it under the canvas? Did you pick up the canvas? Okay. Oh, it's an interesting how that happens, isn't it? Well, here's brush number two. Wait, note to self, fine brush that disappeared, mm. that it's not in the water. Well, maybe, no, 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 it's not in the water. Huh, interesting. Well, okay, so we're going to go into some orange colors now, a little bit of yellow. A little bit of magenta, make a nice pretty bright orange, isn't that pretty? Now let's just come on up here like this and start a new tree up here like this. Now come you're just front. using the tip of your brush? Just the tip, just the corner of that. Again, this, this is, is a quarter an angle. So this is an angle, so I've got a little corner here. Okay. So it's almost like using one of the um, little pointy brushes. Yeah, it's almost like, it is, it's, it's sort of a, it's a very versatile brush for me. I'm going to just sit there and say here's some lighter colors. and. I definitely wanted to break up this one. So you had to put some orange in here. That's pretty though. Let's see, I think I want some orange over here. Okay. Remember, it's not stars. They all, these little dots overlap. They touch and overlap each other. There's little tiny dots. And um, like I said, I'm just using the corner of my brush. I'm gonna come back in here like that. Now I want a darker color, so I'm gonna take a little bit of magenta and purple and a little maybe cad red medium. I want a dark red here, okay? So we're gonna come in here like this and we're gonna suggest this beautiful, isn't that just, you guys remember this color in fall trees, this sort of deep dark red color. And the dark is on the, the shadow side of the tree. Okay, so we're gonna say that there's some darker here and I don't wanna lose all my green. I'm gonna suggest there's some dark, this dark color. Maybe back over into here like this, like that. There's just some of this dark be something coming up this way. Just, it's very nice. You just use the tip of your brush. I think it was fun to have Daniel on the show because I like showing the fact that there's so many different ways to paint stuff. And, you know, it's really fun to just don't watch people paint. I know that. I like, you know, sometimes, um, you know, if, if I'm somewhere and somebody's painting, I'll just stop and watch what they're doing because Sometimes my mind's going, grab the next color. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, grab the color. But I didn't have any of those thoughts with Daniel. I really just, I was just very interested to see what he was going to do next. I'm going to add a little yellow to this, lighten it up slightly. Same, same color, but just a bit lighter. Kind of going over that like that. It's a little bit darker orange, like that, coming this way. Come down like that. Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure we want something over in here. Uh oh. We, we're not losing the stream, are we? No, the stream's fine. Just off my left and right, though. Well, what about that? Did your left and right hands missing? What did you lose? I'm moving left and right. That's never gone out before. Huh. Okay. So you see, this is getting. This is sort of nice, and it's just. Uh, you see how we're just building this up. John's able to move the camera around, which is kind of cool, right? which is neat. Now I think I want to put some of this color in here like this and I'll start going sideways with it. Just like that using the, the knife edge of my brush like that. Maybe just come down like this. Put some of this color. You see how beautifully this starts to sh starts to, sh to show a reflection. Okay. Like that. I think that's neat. Like that, and we're going to put down here some colors in the water, like that. Now, again, if I was going to put a deer, I wouldn't put it smack dab in the mid middle, but you could put a little deer right there, a little tiny one about that big. It'd be very small, but if you were going to do that, but that, not on an 8x10 canvas. You'd have to have a little more room to play, you guys. Definitely would need a little more room to, to play if you were going to do that. See, so we're just starting to put our picture back and forth like this. And then you'll start building up the colors like that. And let's see, where else have we got something right? Straight down. 
if we if you think about it we you, you know uh, water is a mirror it's a mirror image if you if you were doing a house for instance all you'd have to do is just flip it upside down and paint the house upside down and that's how you'd do a reflection of it, say a building okay and we're back and we're back all right John's sitting down we're sorry back. for all the interruption on your video we were back to normal again all right did you cut the video off or did you what did you do no I stood in front of the camera okay. I got to see my back for a second all right, I'm going to bring, now this is a CAD, a CAD red medium in yellow. Now I want you to see how much brighter this color is. Now look at that. Is that not a brighter color? You see the difference? But fall is one of those times when it gets very bright. You can overdo it with too much color. I, I, I know that sounds funny from coming from me. But I mean, I really like that color there. And I think I want to put some of that color down in here in the water. Same thing here like this. I want to just suggest some of this color here and I might add some yellow oxide to that and lighten it up just a touch and then come up here like this. A little bit more lighter oranges here like that. So, so kind of t t toned it down just a hair. Coming back and forth like this. Put the colors in which is kind of cool. I mean I think that's fun. Let's see, what we, we, we kind of, did you know acrylics dry darker? So we were so happy with um, this little orange tree here for a second, and then not so happy anymore. Okay, let's get, let's get some orange back up in here. How about up in here like this? Something up in here. We have some beautiful, where's our, um, our, our um, release for last week, John, the, uh, the old mill? because that's got some beautiful fall uh, colors and if you guys are enjoying painting this kind of thing I'm going to come this way and suggest this tree is reflecting all the way down like that and that maybe we're seeing something from up here yeah so and then uh, you've got the old mill too the other one okay so I'm going to just show you this this is a this is the weekly release we had for our members Ginger Cook Live last, uh, last Thursday you know, uh, yeah, that, no, the old, you know, the, the water one, waving water with the mill. And you'll notice that, again, you see, we're not doing it, that this is very similar, isn't it, to how we're painting these trees? I mean, couldn't we just kind of keep the, couldn't could we keep the scene going almost, right? So when you, when you, when you're thinking about, you know, I mean, how difficult would this painting be for you? If you can do this, I don't think you're going to have any trouble, you know, uh, doing this. And then on our wave and water master class, which is separate from our regular video lesson library. Last year we introduced these fall trees, and I just want to show you. Well, it's, uh, you see how this could keep going? Do you see that? This could all keep going. So you know what you do. What we try to do is have you build skills, build skills, so that when you see something like that, you're going, "Go, well, you know, I think I could do that." Now we just did that again. You lost a brush again. Uh, wow. You need adult supervision over there. <laughs> now here it is. Oh my goodness. It got clear over there. All right. So I'm not having this. Just going, where, where did that go? I'm just going. All right. So I just want you to know that when this is what, you know, you build skills. That's the key. Build skills. Decide on a light area. Um, what are the things you want to, you know, uh, I'm going to put a few little leaves down here on the, on the, on the stones and stuff because stuff falls. Um, Oh, Jennifer's asking, I know it's been a while ago since they're delayed, what color did you use to darken the first red? <laughs> oh, that was interesting. I used um, a little bit of uh, magenta and a tiny little bit of purple. Magenta you know? and purple to make a yeah, dark red. Th and then I put a little tiny bit of uh, cad red medium in it and darken that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that there's an e even a little bit darker here. Here, okay. I think that's what I did. Here's a little more magenta. I'm going to come in front of this tree now, like that, and kind of hide that one a little bit so you don't see just one big long bush. And let's put a little bit of dark in here, like that, in the water. Sometimes you just have to keep going over this because you put colors and they just, quite frankly, they disappear on you. You think you've got them and then you don't, you know, like that. So they're kind of disappearing, but you can see it. Now I feel like I've got three trees that are all, almost the same here. Do you see that? One, two, three, and they, I've cloned those trees just by talking to you, not really paying attention to my shapes. So I'm going to come back with a little bit of yellow and thalo blue, make a brighter green, add a little yellow oxide to it. 
And I'm going to come in here like this. I'm going to add a little brighter green in here. Down here like that. Put a tiny bit of red with that. Just tone that down just a bit. And bring some of these front, or front trees a little bit brighter. The, the brighter colors are going to be in the front. Okay, I'm going to pull some of that down in here like that. A little bit of that green. All right. And uh, let's see, I think I want a little bit of more yellow. And I want something a little bit lighter. Now you have to be careful because if this is a brighter yellow, I'm going to say there's a little bit bright yellow bush and maybe something right here on top of that green that's something brighter. Um, you've got to kind of watch it because what's going to happen is is that um, you, if you start getting into green into wet, wet, red, you get mud. So if you're going to do that, you barely want to touch it. Okay. So all right. So we're going to say that happened there, and then I think I want to kind of rinse my brush a little bit, and uh, dum 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 dum. Yeah, get a little magenta. Well, one thing I did here in cad red medium and magenta, and a little bit of yellow. Okay, so that's a different color. I want more of a brighter or ooh, isn't that pretty? I want a brighter red right in here like that. Come up here like this. Come oh way up here. Maybe all the way up. Bring that tree up. See now I don't have three. Now I've stopped the cloning stuff in a heartbeat, right? Put that over here. Maybe have a little of this color over here off the there like that. Then come add a little bit of this to our water. This is actually, I'm going to like this painting even better than the one that I did for a demonstration, for a sample. I think I'm going to taking a little more time and, you know, doing the colors it can be very pretty. They're like that. So if you can see where we're getting the, these pretty colors from. And then I need a little bit darker, a little bit darker uh, orange over here like that. You know, sometimes it's fun to just make yourself a little color map like we did for the abstract or we did for Genie and just See all the different oranges you can make using those colors before you get too far, okay? Okay, so we're going to say that that's down in here like that. Just little, we've got something, just some little bushes that are peeking through. All right, so I think we're pretty good like that. And then I think what I'm going to do next is the waterfall. I'm going to show that, how we would might do the waterfall. And also, we could lighten up those trees a bit. They're probably birch trees if they're kind of white like that. So let's just lighten up that gray. Mary's asking, how can we keep from doing the cloning? Well, here, here, Mary, here's why you do cloning. Okay, and it's out comes Ginger's chalkboard, okay? So um, here's why we do cloning. When you learn to write, when you learn to write, when you were in first or second grade or kindergarten, whenever it was you learned, maybe two or three, it doesn't matter, right? When you made the letter A, your mind goes, oh, a letter A. And then when you made a, you know, kind of a handwriting A, goes, goes that, right? Your mind doesn't know the difference between the letter A and your symbol for tree. It means the same thing to your mind. So what happens is that same reason that handwriting analysis people can look at you at the age of 16, have you write a paragraph, and incidentally your handwriting hasn't changed since you were a little kid, um, they can tell a lot about your personality. Isn't that fun, interesting? But, and they, because your handwriting stays the same. That's why it's so hard to copy people's signatures, all right, too. And, and um, mostly, I mean, there's forgers. They, they, have, they have a special term for people that are able to easily forge someone's handwriting and signatures. Not that easy to do. Well, if you think about it, so if when you were in kindergarten and the last pine tree you made was this, and then I tell you, you know what, this is how you do a pine tree. I want you to make one like this. Chances are you're going to start painting it like this and not even know what happened. You're just going to do that. You're going, I didn't want to do that. Well, it's just your mind is trying to be helpful. No, no, this is, a, in our language, in our handwriting, this is the letter A, and this is a pine tree. You said, and this is what we do. So then, okay, so now you override your mind, and you say, all right, here's the new pine tree, okay? This is our new pine tree, like that. This is whatever, whatever the newest pine tree is. Maybe you were 12 when you did it, maybe it's this year, whatever. This is the new pine tree. Well, you know, there's about 30, 50, 100 different kinds of pine trees. 
but 30, 50, 100 different kinds. Yeah, just lots of different kinds. It's the point I'm making. So lots of different <laughs> kinds, and they all don't look like that, right? right? Some of them have, some of them have their branches going up. You know what I mean? And some, you know, there's lots of different kinds. So, but you'll make that one. You'll make the last one. So that being said, now just bear with me, right? So once it decides you're doing something. Just like handwriting, we did those trees. For instance, once you said that this is a cloud, what you know, then you're going to have that same cloud everywhere, which is fine if you're doing bricks. You know what I mean? Because you need them all kind of the same. But you know, mostly bricks are about the one of the few things that you want the same. So everybody will do it. Both professional artists, and I challenge you, go to museum sometime, art museum, and look at some of the great masters, and they were perfect except they cloned all the clouds. They did, or they cloned all the rocks, or they, they did this with the waves. I promise you, there are people, and it's because your mind is being helpful, and it says, okay, this is what we said is now a wave. So you can, how to stop it is just be aware that you do it, and then change it, that's all. Just, because you, it's really hard to override it, because your mind wants to do it for you. Ginger's 101 on why you clone. And, and, and I think I'm one of the few artists that ever talk about cloning. I think this is something that, um, you know, I think I don't think a lot of artists even talk about that, but I like to talk about it because I think that's what happens. All right. Well, this we is, just witnessed you do it. Well, yeah, you saw me do it. And, 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 you know, it's fine if it's a fence, you know, a row of something, but mostly it's, it's supposed mostly to be it's the not, same. That's something that's supposed to be, but mostly it's not, okay? So, you know, um, they say most artists, you know, and, and when they paint people, paint themselves, you know, they paint their eyes because <laughs> that's the one they see all the time in the mirror. They'll paint their eyes, for instance. Um, it's, uh, it's just something you got to be aware of. Okay, so we see, we see we've got these nice uh, colors in here now, really pretty colors in the water. I want to say that I've got a waterfall coming down here like this and put a little phthalo blue with it. Not gonna do. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna say my waterfall is coming, right? Like that's coming down over these. It's coming down, and then gravity fa is falling. I want to leave a little bit of a ground here, like that. It's coming like that, and then as it hits here, got a little bit of blue here. It's gonna come along here and fan out like that. Okay. Now that's a little bit too blue, so we'll put a little white over the top of that. That's fine, that's fine. We're gonna say here's the white where it's cresting over the blue sort of our shadow color. And we're gonna say that here's our our water kind of coming in here like this, okay? Like that, and uh, maybe I'll have this coming th this way, okay? There's our first little waterfall. I'm gonna rinse the brush, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna kinda uh, gray that water out a little bit. Okay, make a little gray color here, a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of white. Gotta kind of soften that water, a little tiny bit of phthalo blue. There you go, gonna just gray this water out just a hair, okay? And uh, I'm gonna say, and I could say, for instance, that I've got another one back here that's just, that's kind of behind the trees here, that there's this water, and then, um, Maybe something's floating along here and it's coming down here and floating here again here. We're going to say another, there's another little tributary coming down here like that, floating off of here. So this is what, this is why I called it Twin Falls. I'm just going to say that there's this water here and I'm back into white. Here's where a tiny little brush would be helpful when you're trying to do this. And I'll check, because that, in all fairness, this would be the easiest, because you want these little tiny rivulets of water coming down like that, like that word rivulets. Sounds good though, doesn't it? I'm just into the white here. Do to do. Do to do. Okay, something like that. Okay. And then what we're going to say happened is with our gray, we're just going to, we're going to define our bank line like this. Let's just say that the kind of curving around here like this. And what we'll do here is take some dark green color, put it back into the wall. Let's put a little red with that. We're going to come back here and put it into our bank here like this. And um, I think I want a little orange bank, a little orange 
bush growing over the bank. I think that would solve a lot of problems right there like that. So we're going to say that just right in here like this, I've got some sort of little bush that's growing up here over the bank like that. And I got into the wet green with this and got kind of a muddy color bush. But there it is. It's growing over the bank. You were using that little liner brush for the... Yeah, I was using... That's one of the ones in Cinnamon's Kit. I really like this. This is a... Uh, it's called a pointed round, and it's a 12 slash zero silver ultra line brush. Really nice little lines on that. And I'll tell you, when you need some really thin lines, what you got to do is we're using heavy body paint, but Golden makes a um, a liquid paint, which is really cool. They're, they, um, and I like it for white or brown, right? It's called this is titanium white, and you don't you can do an off white too. They can, and it comes in little tiny bottles. Gosh, I bought that about a year ago. I'm still you haven't haven't begun to touch it, but you can take something like this, which is more. It has the same pigment as uh, as as your regular titanium, but it's fluid, almost more like ink. You can come up here like this. Look at the look at the ease with which the lines are flowing. Aren't you kind of impressed? See how that's doing it? And it can come around like this. And I'm going to do some little here, like this, and just come up this way like that around my waterfall, okay? And also, if I wanted to just add that to this gray color that I just made, for instance, remember I told you I'd, I'd like my trees to be a little lighter? So I can take a little brush like this and uh, you can get some nice, uh, really nice uh, thin branches if you need that. You know, sometimes it's, you know, whatever you can get the, you know, the most control of when you're doing something. Here's a question for you. Here's something like that. When people talk about finding your style, in quotes, does that mean I only do a certain type, like Impressionism, or painting the same type of things, like putting a purple chicken in every painting? Um, I look for the purple chicken. It's it's not that 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 purple that, that that's a gimmick. Purple chicken in every painting. That's not your style. That's just a gimmick. It's just not <laughs> the same. Okay. But um, but for instance uh. Your style is like your handwriting, okay? Like, for instance, you may tend to lean more toward realism, photorealism. And you may be a very neat painter, okay? I'm gonna darken this, widen this up a little bit. You may be a very neat painter, which is a fine thing to be, right? And you can just, you can almost recognize it's your palette, it's the colors you gravitate toward. All those things make a difference. Um, uh, let's see, just put that along here like this. Um, it's, your, um, it's your color palette, it's the subjects you pick. One of the hardest things for um, publishers, uh, this is just like uh, for, uh, book publishers too. Pierce Anthony is my best example of that. I don't know if anybody ever read the Xanth series years ago. Um, I'm not sure he's still writing, but maybe I haven't read him in a long time. But he. He was really good at writing as fantasy fiction, and then also outer. And he ventured into outer space fiction, you know, and that was good. Okay, but then he wanted then he wanted to start crossing genres, and nobody wanted to read a romance novel from him. Does that make sense? Because they got very fond of his. And one of his things that I used to love about his books was his main characters would find themselves in a dilemma, and they'd have th they'd have to do three things to get out of the the entanglements. And how he thought this stuff up was just amazing to me. I mean, I just loved it. See, I'm going to kind of connect these right here like that. And I loved it. So, but the artists, for instance, what happens with a lot of artists, what makes it hard to get publishers, is that they want a style. In other words, if you paint oceans, and that's all they want to publish for you is oceans. And it doesn't matter how great you paint tractors, they don't want to see them. And um, whatever your deal is. And, you know, artists... Oh, if you're, you know, artists are about imagination. And a true story, I'll tell you, a true story I'll tell you is that there was this young gal that I met years ago. She was uh, considered a prodigy, and she did a lot of Picasso kind of art. She was like 15. And there was this uh, publisher that, uh, this well, it was an art gallery that found her. And um, I won't say where she is because she's still alive painting, okay? And they promoted her. This is the genius kid, and her artwork went for a lot of money. And they wouldn't let her change her color palette. They wouldn't let her change anything. Well, you know, at 16, she was still painting. At 18, it was interesting. At 19, it was less extraordinary. At 21, it was sort of ordinary. 
what was cool for somebody 15 wasn't so cool at eight, nine, and she hated it she hated what she was painting and they had her under contract they talked her mother out of sending her to art school for fear they'd ruin her they ruined her absolutely ruined this kid and her art her art never developed because they wouldn't let her so um but they found a style that they liked okay that would be like if you decided you were good at this type of abstract and that's the only thing you paint. You no longer paint this anymore because they, people only wanted to see this from you. That would be like a style. Okay, does that make sense? Thomas Kincaid had a style. All right, and he painted he painted little bits of heaven. Trust me, nobody wanted to see the Roman Colosseum from him, and lions in it. Don't matter how well he could paint it. And G. Harvey was another one. He was an artist that painted a lot of Texas oil fields and. You know, when there were horseback people running around, you know, what would be about 1940 or something, and, and out in the ranches and people in French coats and on horseback in the rain and that kind of thing. And he also did uh, trolley cars from Boston and stuff, old-timey stuff. Um, he went and did a whole tour of Moscow and Europe and painted all kinds of stuff. Nobody wanted that. It wasn't matter how well he painted it, that he had his style. The public had locked him in on the style and that's all they wanted to see. So that's what we mean by style. And I, one of the reasons I love being an art teacher, and because I've had publishers, I still have some, and they only want to see certain things. What I love is that I can come up, wake up every morning and paint something different and show how you how to paint it. And it's as fun for me as it is for you. And it's still fun because I can explore the boundaries of things. Does that make sense? Good to know, right? We'll put a few little leaves that might be floating in our water. Could you tell us a little about about your shirt you have on today, please? Yeah, this is a this little shirt is an it's an owl with some with little owls on the trees, but it's in the shape of an owl. And I get these shirts. I I look for shirts that if I get paint all over them, they still look okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I I have this company that I'm, I'm very fond of. They're it's called a uh, Woot. They're owned by Amazon now. And our, you can submit your designs for shirts. Did you know that? I've never done that, but you can. Okay. So we're going to start brightening something up here. Mm, you can, absolutely. Let's brighten this tree up a little bit here, a little more yellow on this tree here. We're going to brighten this tree up like, like this, and let's brighten this one up. Here we go. Look at that. See how we're lightening stuff? So, um, yeah, and I, I look, uh, you know, probably about every couple months I see something that one of the, usually it's the same artists that come up with these things. And I have a bunch of shirts I buy from, from them that, uh, you know, they still look cute. You know, when they're covered with paint, they look more intent. It looks more intentional. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to start pulling in the, uh, some color back in here. Same thing in here. So it's, you know, just sort of smearing it out here like that. See how this is coming? Maybe come down here. Bring the word kind of chasing the color. Let's bring something over here. Now, one thing we can do is we can take a little bit of green. And we can come across this pond like this and with some lines going this way, all the way across, which kind of keeps it, you know, kind of breaks up the water a bit. Does that make sense? Here, even a little bit of dark. We can come up here and you can break up the water like this and just do some horizontal lines. Now, you see what we just did? You see how that suddenly with your background color, just break it up a few places. So now that feels more like a pond, doesn't it, when you do that? Because you don't want to lose all your um, stuff. And then I think we kind of lost our, um, we, we kind of lost some of our trees in here. So you can, you can just sneak in here and put them back a little bit. But I, anyway, I like, I like the, I like the Woot company and I like the shirts because they really wear, I've had some for years. You just go really to Woot.com, don't you? Or you go yeah, Woot.com, yeah. yeah. They always have a bunch of deals. I bought some other stuff from them, too, but my favorite thing is the shirts. And um, you know, just I think I want one coming this way. Yeah. Just, just, just indicate a little, just some trees. You don't have to put them all in. Just a few little squiggly lines indicating there might be some trees. That you might have saw some trees, something like that. Maybe we'll even pull some lines this way, a little bit of off-white. Hey, we have a lot of new visitors with us tonight. Um, what about the dice? 
so people understand. What oh, the, the dice. Oh, yeah, we didn't play a dice game too, and we're almost done with the painting. Well, all right. Well, let's let's play one. This is art trivia called Stump the Artist. So, uh, you know, one of the things we roll the dice. We have an art trivia game, and you guys try to stump me. Though this isn't this isn't a big challenge because it's not that I'm the big expert on history of art or anything. But we all learn something, so it becomes fun. So notice I put the brush right here. Everybody saw that? There. We never yeah? really thought of our screen, so we have to we have to assume it's there. It's six. A mystery question. We know you hate those. I hate those, John. <laughs> I hate the mystery questions. They're always they, at the end. There's still a mystery. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna put a little more white right here. Just kind of make that waterfall oh, a little okay. more prominent. Okay, we're gonna have two questions from the sixth section. Okay. So we're gonna give a, a little warm up so everybody will get this one. All right, a little warm up. We we like that a little warm up. I am a painter with a cut ear. Oh. This is your warm up. That's my warm up. I am a painter with a cut ear. Okay. Na, 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 so, anybody got da, that yet? Da, 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 Are we on some da, sort of time well, delay? Do they have to listen to you sing? Yeah, they have to listen to me sing until I start getting answers. Come well, on. Well, no, they're going to give you answers. I'll give you one. Well, that's not No, you, you can't give me one. Then they'll well, know I'm what the answer is. I'm just trying to stop you singing. If that's what it'll take, let me give you an answer. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, they'll be coming in any second now. Okay. I am a painter with a cut ear. Wow. Gail says Van Goop, Van, Van Gogh. Yeah. Jerp is Van Gogh, Mary Van Gogh, Lynn Van Gogh, Lynn Van Gogh, Tanya Van Gogh, Alicia Van Gogh. So you guys understand how the game is played. All right. Jennifer mm -hmm. Van Gogh, Janice is Van Gogh, LeBlanc Van Gogh, Kimson Bufferington, right? What? I don't know. Robbins Van Gogh, Tina Van Gogh. Peggy, everybody's Van Gogh. What was it? Kim Sim. Minus a thousand points for Kim Sim. Okay. Lynn uh, says a cut ear. Come on, people. All right. Yeah, so duh. that's so we're okay, going to say. So, so who is it? So let's go on to the next one because we all everybody knows who this is. Right? Okay. Yeah. This isn't a big. This isn't a big hum. Well, no, but, but you know, the new players needed to know what it was. How we play, right? Yeah. How we play. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Something a little more challenging. Okay. My first is a broken piece of glass, and my second is much, is much loud noise. My all is a painter of still life. My first painting is a broken piece no, no, of glass. No, did I, did, hey, apparently you have to listen to the question. Apparently, I don't get the question. My first is a broken piece of glass. And my second is much loud noise. My all is a painter of still life. Oh. I have to change my glasses so I can see the answer. Yeah, because I need, I just would, yeah, wow. Okay, so I can darken this in here. Like oh, this. I get it. Oh, it's funny. Okay, here we go. Good, I'm glad you get it. I get it. My first is a broken piece of glass. And my second is a much loud noise. My all is a painter of still life. Da, 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 da. Think of a name that has two syllables. Break the two syllables apart. Oh, a name with two syllables. Now that's, the, that's at least a hint, right? Yeah, I'm giving you an extra hint. Uh, um, um, Dorothy, we're, we're passing and go, honey. Unless you're still far behind, which you could be. She could be. Yep. We're going to shout out to Dorothy from the UK. We get a Dorothy lot of from friends the from the UK, and right. we want to just shout out to all our friends. And hey, thanks for our moderators who've been helping us tonight. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, and Kim Sim and Tanya. And Tanya? I, don't, I don't think I've seen. No, Wendy is traveling tonight. Yeah, when, yeah Wendy's traveling. Okay. But we have the two. We don't no, have thank any Thank you guys. We have we, a great. We appreciate you guys very much. Oh, thank Alicia's you very, very much. close. Okay, so. Shard is the first word. We're getting that. Peggy's coming up with din for the end. Cuds come up with chardon. Oh, that's good. I wouldn't have guessed that. Good for you guys. Chardon. We've done some of his paintings, oh, by the way. Oh, we love his paintings. We've done a bunch of Chardon's paintings on our... Um, uh, do you have our Chardon painting? I think it's in the au auction there. Do you have Is that? Is that the uh, yeah, The pot? eggs with the eggs, yeah. That's what you guys want to see, a Chardon painting? This we man is so adorable. A portrait of this guy. 
he is so he was so cute he lived about a hundred years before vincent van gogh really really adorable guy looking guy and he and he dressed very outrageously you know artists can be so eccentric you know the nice thing about artists is they cross all barriers social barriers artists are invited everywhere you know all right this is a painting by chardin don't you love it and that's one of well it's obviously my me but it's in a lesson <laughs> it's a lesson that we have on our website gingercooklive.gallery and i show you how to do it now you've got to imagine it's 100 years before vincent van gogh and look at the pots people still use those Vincent Van Gogh was in, say, late 1800s, so I'm talking about late 1700s. Of course, everybody still had eggs, this funny little ceramic uh, pot. My parents had something like this. I remember yeah, so eating yeah. oh, chicken pot pie or something, yeah. and something oh, yeah. like that. Is that what you had in yours? Yeah. Chicken pot pie? And then look at this uh, sort of uh, stone countertop. I mean, how interestingly cool is that? So, I mean, um, again, this is, is a, a style of painting. It's different than this style. Yeah, that style different just want to emphasize that and it's different <laughs> than what we're painting here this is more impressionistic than this one all right so that's the idea how do you get your own styles you paint a lot of different styles and see what resonates with you that's how you do it okay that's what we suggest that you do that all right so I'm about done so uh, if any other great questions if you haven't subscribed to our channel it has come to our attention about half the people that um, watch watch are not subscribers and here's how subscribing helps if you haven't subscribed in a while make sure that you are subscribed because we, sometimes you just get thrown off and then you push that little bell when we do live interesting things you'll be notified nothing happens I mean salesmen don't come to your door no <laughs> terrible things happen it's just good for the artist it's like if you give us a thumbs up which we really appreciate hope we're getting a lot of them tonight a subscription when you Where subscribe that's nice. Do please do that. Please we subscribe. have three hundred and two people watching and two hundred and fourteen thumbs up. People, come on. We can do Is this not worth a thumbs up? I'm telling. Yeah, and it's you. certainly worth a subscription too. I'm just saying. It's all right. You see, I'm just putting in a few more of these colors. Are you still here. using the three eighth inch angle? Uh, yeah. Still a three eighth inch angle. The, 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 the angle, but either one will do. See how I've just kind of put some greens back in here now. It kind of crossed over here. This is all about layers, but you can see how we've got this neat looking pond now, right? And they'll come out this way with it too. So anyway, that's our, um, this is our, uh, this is our painting Twin Falls. I hope you guys liked it. I'm gonna use my um, Posca pen to sign can, can it. Can you hold that under so we can see the name? See, it's P-O-S-C-A, and they're made in Japan, and what's cool about them is that they last. I, I, I can't tell you how many hundreds of dollars I've spent on pens that were good to write twice and then they were worthless because they dried out and they couldn't be revived. These things, once you open them, as long as you, there's a little click, can you hear it? I'll put it, where's my mic, right here? Yeah. Hear Ooh, the I click? Heard it. Yeah, you have to make sure it clicks like that. And then when you open it for the first time, you gotta shake them. Here's a rule, this is that, well, you get all the good stuff on our channel. Here's a rule, you shake the pen with the cap on, like that, right, about, for about a minute. And you never shake a pen with the cap off. You can spray paint clear across the room. <laughs> really bad. Sometimes you even lose the tip. Yeah, no kidding. That's the tip. And then somebody said they bought one and it burped, you know, somehow and it got paint all over. You need to burp it. You need to pull it. Hold it, hold it under the camera while you do Like that. this. Can you see that? You need you to hold burp. hold it upright so it upright, can burp it. Upright. And then you burp, burp the it. When you it. first, the first time only, to get the air out. Now it'll write, you know, test it on something. And then they're just going to come on here and write like that. See? That looks like one of the thicker ones. That's one of the thicker ones. There's a real fine, fine one, and this is one of the thicker ones. And I'll put the red. Uh, here's the fine one. I don't know. The fine one's around here somewhere. And uh, well, I so here's the difference between the fine point and this one. Can you see? Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see the difference. But see, we can still keep this painting. So anyway, you could make this painting larger if you wanted I would definitely to. Make it we larger. just got this eight by ten so that we could get through it in an evening, and you could kind of see what that would be like After, to do that. Uh, here's a question. Are the Posca pens, when they're dry, are they shiny? No, they're flat. It's a flat, it's a flat, they're flat finish. They're flat. And Daniel said last night, and, and I bought mine from him, he didn't mention this when I was down at the store. Yeah, they have a Posca pen, a brush. A brush. That they have a one, one with a brush tip for calligraphy. So apparently you know, I, I, I was a sign painter when I was um, younger, one of my 20s. I had a little sign painting business. 
And you know, you can't be a dyslexic sign painter. <laughs> they, you know, the thing about it doesn't last long. Well, the problem is that people want the word spelled right. It's what is so wrong with them? I don't know. They want the word spelled right, and they'd sit there and say, we like you just Where so Where is their much. sense of adventure? You know, we just really like you, but could you spell the words <laughs> right? And this was before spell check, and you know, when you're dyslexic, you have no idea. So I have to kind of tone this, um, put a little shadow on the waterfall So it's probably here. a reason why you went into the visual arts? Yeah, yeah, probably. Just, you know. And you know, but when we were younger, they didn't have anything like that dyslexic. They just, um, I used to think it was like candid camera playing tricks on me or something, you know. I, you know, I, I remember again. We have a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. Is the line you threw your threw your name just a style thing, or is there a reason for it? The reason. Okay, I this is going to be the last time. People make a note, bookmark it, share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. She's not going to tell anybody ever again. Uh, the reason that I put the line through the name is that I needed a signature. Uh, there's a lot of cooks, right? And the reason, first off, let's talk about why we just don't say ginger cook. Yes. That's well, first. because. At a gallery, when people are looking, the male artist is still, is, they gravitate toward that first. You know, that's, I mean, I'm talking, I'm, listen, how many female chefs do you know at the White House? I'm just saying that they're, even though we've come a long ways since uh, we got the checkbook and our driver's licenses, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying that there, there's still a perception of, oh. <laughs> go ahead, laugh, but, you know, there's still a perception of uh, that a guy's painting is better. I'm just I saying, they're, they're, I know it isn't true, and everybody knows Jojo O'Keefe and stuff, but naming, you know, when you start naming women artists, people kind of stumble. So uh, so I always sign my name Cook, because I don't want it to just give away gender. And in order to make it more interesting, I needed some sort of interesting signature. And so I noticed that when I was painting mm -hmm. in France, that whenever you left, um, here, I'm going to put up a little tree up here, whenever you, even though I signed my name, the... Um, when you're leaving France, they don't say, like in Houston, they'd say leaving Houston, the city limits, are, you know, they do that all over the United States. In France, they just put a, they put the name, put up Paris, and they put a big red slash through it, and that means that they've left town. You're okay? not in Paris anymore. And so, uh, so when I put the red slash through, it sort of means that I'm done. Sort of. I'm glad how you <laughs> added it. <coughs> well, Because usually, know, usually the slash means we have another half hour to go. Well, again, and then you look at that because here's what happens. Acrylics dry darker. And I want to say that my center of interest is these trees right here, right? So if I want to bring some more attention to that, I could, for instance, come at the very end like this and add a few more little lights right there so that your eyes will go first to the lightest light and the darkest dark. So here's some, almost some pure yellow. So now, now what you're doing is reassuring people will see your twin waterfalls. Yeah, so then, yeah, so I am, and I'm going to just, you know, maybe put a little bit right in here like that, see? Beautiful. See, something so that your eye's going to go here first and not run over. And then I'm not a big fan of this uh, tree right here. Oh, really? It's okay, but I don't really like it, so. Oh, no, um, no, no. You, John likes it. <laughs> Do what, it's your so, painting. So part of it is, here's the thing, part of it is I just, it's too white. You see what I mean? And it's all these white lines are kind of, I don't know, they're not doing it for me. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some burnt umber and some water like that. Just a little burnt umber and water, like a glaze. It would be a glaze. It's not like a glaze. And I'll just, I'll just tone down. Pushing back tree. a little bit. Just, yeah, okay. This is called pushing go. back. You turn now out the lights. there's a compromise. That's, you turn out the lights. This is, you go back and you look and you kind of, you know, you either turn on or off the lights just so that there's not... So now that push that a little further back, the light brings it forward. We're pushing that back a little bit. Just pushing these back. Could have done purple. There you go. You still see the trees, but they're just they're just a little softer. And that's one of the things you want to do at the end of a painting. Turn on and off the lights. That looks good. You know, and yeah, I think it does too. And I think that that's kind of nice. And again, I'm liking, I like all this. And when you're talking about, you know, patterns, you know, now I'm making patterns in the, um, in the in the water here like this and I'm, I'm more interested in the design shapes than in the reflections at this point does that make sense I'm, maybe i still want something dark right there to go for that bank but i'm still looking for the patterns and i like that for instance i might have a little dark or something right here so when you're all done you kind of look at that maybe come back tomorrow and look at it again and say what could i do that might be more interesting 
Oh, what could I, what could I take away and not ruin the effect? That's another one, too. What could I take we're away? Being, we're being asked now, to, you know, we've signed it. What about dating a picture anymore? Do we do that Oh, anymore? yeah, listen, let's talk about that. You know, dating a picture. Um, it's kind of dated. It, no, it's not that. It's that um, when I was a kid, now you got to understand, at this point in my life, I get Medicare, all right? <laughs> but when I was a kid, um, there were no dates on food cans or anything. You, your box of cereal could have been 10 years old. People were building bomb shelters. and it was the, the, the going theory was you bought as many things as you could and stuffed them in the basement, and this stuff was going to be good in 100 years. I mean, you could live underground, and I mean, that was the story they sold, and grocery stores were happy to sell it to you. And then somebody in Congress or some Ralph Nader or somebody said, you know what, some of this stuff goes bad. You've got to date the food. However that came about. I mean, I was a little kid. That's what it started dating. Now, now people, now they date everything. I mean, some stuff could last 100 years, but the manufacturers have to go, no, wait a minute, if we date it, they'll have to go buy new stuff, okay? So let's date it. And so everything pretty much gets dated. So when you date a picture, the perception is that it, it has a shelf life. Yeah. And why didn't you sell it in 1990 if it was such a hot piece? It must be a real dud or you wouldn't sell have it. See what I mean? <laughs> even if you wanted to keep it for your own private collection. So my feeling is if you must date something, put it in Roman numerals on the back. The average chump can't, chimp can't read it anyway, <laughs> and it's for your records. If you must date it, put it on the back. Or Roman create numerals. your own secret code. Your own code. There so I hope, this was, I hope this was fun to do. Again, I want to remind you that last night we learned how to paint clouds with Daniel. We have a whole cloud playlist on YouTube all different ways to paint clouds and um, uh, for instance I wanted to show you this was one of the clouds that uh, you know I showed you some you know I think last year with all kinds of beautiful clouds to paint so if you want to learn how to make clouds Daniel had a wonderful way to do it and I think you'll enjoy that video if you haven't seen it please tell your friends about us and remember John's birthday is next Tuesday we're gonna have a birthday <laughs> bash Monday night we will be live with um, some yeah, great they want fun to know, stuff. What, what are you going to be teaching on Monday and Tuesday? That's what they want to know. I don't know. I never know. Till next, I, I'll, I'll think we about won't it. know till Monday or Tuesday. We never know <laughs> till Monday or Tuesday. It comes to me almost psychically. And then I'm going, oh, let's paint that. And remember, our auction is, in fact, this, uh, this painting right here is one of the ones we have in our auction. No That's kidding. true. That's one of the ones, the Chardin painting, if you guys like that. This is a... Uh, it's an original Chardon with Cook signed on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but I mean, I love that, don't you? You have a whole kitchen series of paintings on there. Check us out, gingercooklive.gallery. Remember, you can try us for a week for only ten bucks, nine ninety-five, and that has access twenty-four-seven to over three hundred lessons. And if you want to try us for just a month, you can say just cancel my membership after a month. Uh, seniors are over sixty or twenty-one ninety-five, and otherwise it's twenty. Um, what eight? 20, what, twenty six ninety five? Twenty six ninety five for a regular, um, regular uh, folks. monthly membership. And what's the advantage of a monthly membership over a weekly one is that it comes with personal art coaching. By yours truly. By me, yours truly. And, and really, the, the helpful hints and stuff I give. And you can even once a month send me something that you've created along with your reference photo. And I will give you awesome suggestions. Night. Offer, uh, uh, what kind of awful? Awesome suggestions. Awesome suggestion. That didn't say. Didn't no, say. like when you told me you're such an awful painter in my last episode. That's why I haven't picked up a brush again. <laughs> I'm still traumatized by that. <laughs> Good night, Ginger. Good night, John. Night, Sammy and Chester. Night, you guys. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Good night.